Currently T minus 4 minutes and 15 seconds until the launch of the Firefly rocket, which is the test rocket for the EDB's WK10 engine. This is a demonstration launch testing out the new engine from the EDB. The payload is a small 0.7 ton satellite, a communication satellite being used for the demonstration. The capacity of this particular rocket, tentatively known as the Firefly, is only one ton, which makes it the smallest rocket designed by the EDB. The first stage has a solid fuel booster, and the second stage is the WK-10 engine. Unfortunately, there is no press kit for this launch because the EDB is currently somewhat hostile to the human press after after the tragedy of Herlas Kerman aboard the T-1 test, which brought the WK-10 engine to altitude for a high altitude test of its ability to stay cool. We have some newly released footage of that test just released from the EDB and so here you see the T1 test one craft for the WK-10 basically an aircraft designed specifically to test this engine and you can see Herlos Kerman taking the plane down the south Florida coast, lighting the engine successfully. Engine temperatures reached 881 degrees Celsius, which is much less than what they reached on the ground test, which was uh, quite positive for the EDB. The full run of the test was four minutes, and it was entirely successful. The engine remained fully stable throughout the test. And then Her Herlas Kerman brought the plane away from the coast just for safety's sake and the engine brought the plane to a maximum velocity of nearly Mach 2 altitude of over 20 kilometers but uh, not within extreme flight envelopes so up to that point the test was fully successful however as Herlas approached the runway the SAS unit had been causing oscillations throughout the flight and her last was having trouble keeping the plane stable. He was also bringing the plane in much faster because he said he had difficulty reducing velocity here and you can see velocity as he approached the runway was exceeding 250 miles per hour. There you have touchdown but the wheels buckled, the landing gear could not hold the plane. There was also difficulty braking uh, I should warn you, the following scenes are disturbing. And that is the newly released footage of the crash of the T-1 with her last Kerman. And obviously after that incident and the Kualunsat failure, there has been a lot of criticism of the EDB and the EDB has responded mainly by, by uh, shying away from the press and they have done so for this launch as well. We're now at T minus 40 seconds. This is the first launch from the EDB using the KOS system rather than the Telemachus system. And so there is no way for the EDB to control the craft from the ground. It is going to be a completely automated launch from start to finish. Uh, that also limits the telemetry data we can give you. That was through Telemachus as we are now T minus 20 seconds. All guidance is internal. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of the Firefly rocket testing the WK-10 engine for the EDB. Flight control seems nominal as the rocket has a predetermined roll maneuver. Pressure within the SRB is good. T plus 30 seconds, 1,600 meters, 113 meters per second. Flight control continues to be nominal. 
The switch to the KOS system should result in a much smoother flight path for this rocket than we've seen from previous EDB launches. T plus 1 minute, 7,500 meters, 312 meters per second. The rocket is now past the speed of sound, 1 kilometer downrange. Cape Canaveral environs clearly in view. Uh, we're getting a look at Orlando there. Orlando's right at the left edge of the camera there. T plus 1 minute and 30 seconds, 20.5 kilometers altitude, 660 meters per second in surface speed. And Tampa Bay now coming into view. The solid rocket uh, booster will burn for 2 minutes and 30 seconds. The maximum burn time for the second stage is 6 minutes and 20 seconds. It will burn for much less than that because the payload is less than the capacity of the rocket. Fifteen seconds to SRB flameout. Five seconds. SRB out, set. And we have successful ignition of the WK-10 engine. The rocket is now past 77 kilometers in altitude, 2,431 meters per second in velocity. And the rocket is well above the altitudes that was tested at by the, uh, the, uh, the T-1 aircraft. But the T-1 was testing at its optimal altitude. We will expect fairing separation at 120 kilometers, that is the pre programmed altitude for fairing separation. Should be coming up on that in less than 10 seconds. Okay, fairing set. T plus 3 minutes and 25 seconds, 123 kilometers in altitude, 2714 meters per second. Just to be clear, the exterior views are of course simulated views and with the fairing separation, the KOS system extended the two antennas on the on the payload. Uh, the two auxiliary antennas that are meant for communication around Earth orbit, the main antenna can communicate to long distances, even for interplanetary probes. The WK-10 continues to burn successfully. Uh, the WK-10 will be shut down once the target apoapsis is reached and then relit upon reaching apoapsis in order to circularize the orbit. This is an intentional test of the ability to restart the engine. There are Ullage rockets on the side of the second stage that will fire prior to the relight of the engine. Should this WK-10 test be successful, we would expect that the EDB will use it in subsequent designs. The cost of the second stage uh, comes to $3.6 million dollars and uh, that's quite affordable. The SRB in the first stage also amounts to about 3.6 million dollars so that the cost of the rocket is roughly uh, 7.2 million dollars and so that's uh, with a one-ton payload seven thousand two hundred dollars per kilogram which is much less than the twenty thousand dollars per kilogram for the Saturn 1H launches which carry four tons or the $12,000 per kilogram uh, with the Saturn 9 launches which carry 20 tons. Of course this payload is much less but if it can be scaled up the expectation is that the uh, cost will actually go down. So uh, $7,200 per kilogram, uh, a step in the right direction for the EDB if this is successful. Now of course the ability to launch small payloads to low Earth orbit is uh, currently very popular. The maximum acceleration for this rocket occurs right at the end of the booster stage, the first stage, 
and it reaches uh, 6 G's of acceleration at that point. That is the maximum load. Uh, the, the, uh, the WK-10 stage uh, ranges from 0.87 G's to, uh, to more than 4 G's if the payload is small. A larger payload will have uh, less of an acceleration load. The target orbit for this launch is 300 kilometers by 300 kilometers. Uh, more specifically, the goal is to set the satellite into a, a relatively circular orbit with an eccentricity of less than 0.01 and a period of 90 minutes uh, plus or minus 1%, which is 54 seconds. So again, uh, the goal is within uh, 9 minutes plus or minus 54 seconds and uh, orbital eccentricity of less than 0.01. Should this test succeed, we expect that the EDB will proceed with development of a H1 or RS-27 variant, uh, an improvement upon the H1 or RS-27 family of engines. And Jeb Kerman has cancelled his third planned moon launch after the failure of Quadlunsat, and what funds could be salvaged are going to the development of that engine. But uh, that is contingent upon the success of this launch and this engine. The, the improvements upon the H1 engine is expected to have improved performance over the H1 or the RS-27, though we'll have to see how those tests go. The EDB is still attempting to sell rights uh, to Titan Station, uh, its right to occupancy aboard that station, and uh, that, uh, it says, would fund a methane liquid oxygen engine to complement its uh, series of engines. This is, of course, a liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engine. And we see it shut down here and reorient. That's according to program. Uh, so, and we can confirm that the apoapsis is at 300 kilometers. So it will now coast to apoapsis for the engine relight. The WK-10 test, the Firefly rocket, is now at Apoapsis and is preparing to relight the WK-10 engine, first with Ullaj rocket ignition. And we confirm a good relight of the WK-10 engine at Apoapsis. It is now raising its orbit and circularizing to an expected eccentricity of less than 0.01. Awaiting payload step here. And that's payload separation. The second stage orbit was 322 by 276. After separation with its boosters, the satellite is now at 340 by 287. A one hour and 30 minute and 39.72 second orbit, which is within the tolerance. Eccentricity is 0 0.004. And so we are happy to bring you this successful test of the WK-10 engine aboard the Firefly rocket from the EDB. We hope you enjoyed this coverage of this launch. And with that, this is the EDB signing off.